Alright. So Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening, everyone. A uh, very warm welcome to the the first session of twenty twenty four. Um, hope uh, you have a wonderful start to this new year, twenty twenty four. Uh, hope it is a very devotional and a blissful, full of joy, peace, fulfillment, and a lot of uh, spiritual acquisition this year as well for all of us. So, wishing again everybody a very happy new year, twenty twenty four, and happy Bhakti Divas as well. So, with that said, let's get started with our today's session, with our opening prayers. I'll recite it, and then uh, you could silently recite it at your place as well. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo. Maheshwar Ha Guru Sakshat Par Brahma Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Vasudev Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Okay, so Radha Radha, good morning, good evening everyone. Again, a very happy new year 2024 to you. Uh, like I said, it's our first session on 2024 and uh, what better way to get, get started on this one than discussing uh, what is binding karma, what is not binding karma, what is renunciation um, of karma mean? Because karma is something that none of us can stay without, not even for a second. That is what Lord Krishna is talking about. So let's get started. Uh, we, we are on Shloka 4.41 and we'll try to cover this um, and conclude it and uh, continue to build on where we left last time. So I'm going to recite it and then you're welcome to follow along. Yoga Sanyasta Karmanam Jnana Sanchinna Sanshayam Atma Vantam Na Karmani Nibhadnanti Dhananjaya Okay, let's take a few hands. Radha Radha Sumeshi, go ahead. Radha Nitinji, Radha Radha everyone. Yoga Sanyasta Karmanam, Jnana Sanchinna Sansayam, Atma Vantam Na Karmani, Nivadnanti Dhananjaya. Radha Radha. Radha Radha, thank you. Shamji, please go ahead. Radha Radha. Yoga Sanyast Karmanam Gyan Sanchin Sanchayam Atma Vantam Karmani Nibhadanti Jananjaya Radhe 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 ज्ञान संचिन्न संचयम आत्म वंतम न कर्माणि निबद्धन्ति धनंजय नाइस थैंक यू कृष्ण को हेल्प प्लीज और आते आते योग संयस्थ कर्माणम ज्ञान संचिन्न संचयम आत्म वंतम न कर्माणि very nice. Thank you, Patricia. Okay, let's see. Any hands? Go ahead, Rahulji. Radhe Radhe. Yoga Sanyast Karmanam Jnana Sanchin Sanshayam Atma Vantam Na Karmani Nibandhanti Dhananjaya Radhe Radhe. Thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, Happy New Year everyone. 
योग संयस्त कर्माण ज्ञान संचिन्न संशय आत्मवंत न कर्मा निबंधनती धनंजय थैंक यू थैंक यू रागी जी राधे राधे थैंक यू योग संयस्त कर्माण ज्ञान संचिन्न संशय आत्मवंत न कर्मा निबंधनती धनंजय Very nice. Rade, rade. Okay, let's take the last two hands. Go ahead, Ramya ji. Thank you. Rade, rade. Yoga sanyasta karmanam, jnana sanchinna sanchayam, atma vantam na karmani, nibhatnanti da nanjaya. Thank you, Rade, rade. Thank you. Last but not the least, Ramya ji. Please. Go ahead, please, Ramya ji. Thank you, Rade, rade. योग संयस्त कर्माण ज्ञान संचिन्न संशय आत्मवंत न कर्मा निबंधनती धनंजय भगवदगीता लाइक यू नो इट इज इट इज कॉल्ड ब्रह्म विद्या विच इज द नॉलेज ऑफ of brahma which is the absolute truth also it is called a yog shastra that means it it gives us not only the knowledge about you know god our relationship with god and how we need to lead our life but also it provides us the practical tools so it's also a, called a yog shastra where it pro provides you with the precise instructions on what to do and how to carry out um you know your day to day work or how to operate in this world and in this particular shloka what lord krishna is talking about is actions that do not bind you know how are they performed basically how can we renounce karma in the renounce the karma so that the karma is not binding and on one hand we have to perform karma at every moment i think one of the questions that came up uh, from himangini ji if you are there is yes is there that she hears karma and karma right so both are same okay it's like so you can pronounce it as karam or karma at times uh, there are categories of karma or karam that we'll go to you know but the essentially the word is the same there's no difference absolutely between any of these words now how do we make karma a non binding one is what we are discussing right now so what lord krishna is saying oh arjun actions do not bind those who have renounced karma in the fire of yog whose doubts have been dispelled by knowledge and who are situated in knowledge of the self is used the word atmavant atmavant is one who is situated in the knowledge of the self when they understand they are divine they understand they are not this body not this mind not this intellect and none of it that we normally associate our identity with let's move on uh, we start with our soul soup segment the happiness fulfillment series that we are doing for success happiness and fulfillment series this is our initial segment now last week we were talking about karam yoga it's a remedy for stress we spoke about it in great detail and let's continue now on the nugget now the question that i would like to pose is ignorance is bliss that is usually right there's a saying in english ignorance is bliss but is it truly bliss anybody who thinks it's it is bliss however much so we would like it to be but it is not a bliss okay now let's let's understand it through some examples here so ignorance or not knowing what you are doing is definitely not a bliss it's actually a curse i would say now let's understand it through a story okay there was a married couple and they were returning from a funeral of their uncle whose name was okay forget it how does it matter one of his uncles so they were returning from the funeral and this uh, uncle of them they had he had lived with them for 20 years and he had been such a nuisance that he had almost succeeded in ruining their marriage okay that is how he was 
Now, on their way back, when they were coming back from the funeral, husband said, there is something I have to say to you, dear. He told his wife. So he said, yeah, go on. So he said, if it had not been for my love for you, I wouldn't have tolerated or put up with your uncle for not even for a single day. Okay, that's what he's telling his wife. Now, what is what does the wife say? You said, oh, my uncle, you're talking about? And she was horrified on hearing that. She said, I all along I was thinking it was your uncle. And she was putting up with him, thinking it's my husband's uncle. Okay, both of them were doing the same. Now, what happened here? It's because of ignorance, they both suffered for 20 years. So, ignorance, as we understand, the lack of knowledge is definitely not a bliss. Just the knowledge would have saved a lot of time for them and possibly a lot of hard work that they went through, tolerating it for a reason that they didn't have to. Now, there's another thing I would tell you. There's a, doc there's a patient who goes to a doctor with a severe stomach ache. Okay. The patient is in immense pain. And when the patient reaches the clinic, he found that the doctor was not in. The doctor was probably attending to somebody else, right? As, as it often happens when you need the doctor, the doctor says, okay, wait. And then you are made to wait for 30, 40, 50 minutes. Now, he waited in the chamber and the pain was unbearable. He kept on tolerating that pain. After an hour, the doctor walks in and he checks the patient and prescribes him the medicine and uh, ask the pharmacist to dispense it. The patient ex explained, you know, doctor, uh, is the medicine with the pharmacist all along? Because the pharmacist was sitting right next to him, right? And he just pulled it out and gave it to him. So if he had had that knowledge, he could have saved that pain. Now you might say he might have needed a prescription, but then if he had that knowledge and he knew the pharmacist had it, he, he could have you know, told him about it and then done something about it. And he, but because of that, of lack of knowledge, he had to suffer that pain for one hour. Okay. So ignorance is the reason for, similarly, ignorance is the reason for our misery as well in our human life. And uh, Adhyatma Ramayana says, Adhyatma Ramayana says what? It says that Ajnana me vasehi mool karnam. This is from Adhyatma Ramayana. That means that this cause of suffering in all human beings is their lack of knowledge. It's not the lack of intent or a lack of, um, you know, or, or some kind of a predisposition to doing something bad as such. Everybody wants to do good in life. Where do they err? In knowledge, in ignorance. Okay, that knowledge gap is what results in these kind of scenarios. So this human life is essentially, if you look at it, journey of life is a move from darkness of ignorance towards light of wisdom. And when we're reading Bhagavad Gita, essentially, we are moving away from that ignorance, peeling off the layers of ignorance, which are situated or cornered our mind or conditioned our mind to varying degrees because of our, you know, so many lifetimes, past lifetimes, and we are trying to remove that ignorance step by step, very systematically. And when we do that, it is empowering. It breaks the shackles, it empowers us, it gives us a lot of confidence and it gives us an, an ability to not second guess ourselves in every, every other situation in life. We can approach every situation in life with a lot of assuredness and confidence because now we understand the knowledge or the true um, you know, knowledge behind anything that we decide to choose or do because it's coming from the scriptures. So reading Bhagavad Gita is a great stepping stone towards that. And like I always keep on saying, we are extremely fortunate and let's make the most of this opportunity. So with that said, let's move on to our shloka and get the discussion going. So if you look at it, changing an outcome, let's look at it. Let's eat grandma. Now this seems horrifying, right? Let's eat grandma. But let's eat, comma, grandma. That changes a lot of stuff. So small bit of knowledge. Punctuation matters. It can save lives also, as you can see that, right? 
So just a small piece of knowledge can do wonders. Similar to that, you know, a little bit of punctuation, a little bit of correction changes the entire context, the meaning itself. So similarly, a little piece of knowledge can do wonders in our life. Just understanding that, you know, seva or serving God or uh, offering the fruits of our results to God or thinking uh, not so much about the outcome, but the process is the way forward. Any piece of knowledge can actually change the outcome of our lives. Or if you do bhujangasan, that can actually help you build lower back uh, strength and then it can alleviate your back pain. So any little bit of knowledge, that can it, it has a power to transform or change your life. And in this case of the knowledge that we are um, discussing and contemplating upon, it is super powerful. It can sim do a lot of wonders. Any piece of knowledge that gets stuck in your head that you can resonate with or you can latch on to and practice on a regular basis can really change things for us. It can really transform our lives. Okay? That is the power of this knowledge. Now, how does it work? This is how it works. We've been talking about faith. It's a journey of faith, but you experience it. Unless you experience it, nothing, it's more theory at that point, right? It's like, okay, I've heard it and this seems lofty and but what's the practical relevance of it? So you start with an observation or a question, then you research a topic area. This is how we approach scientifically, even in the world. Then there's a hypothesis, then you test it, then you analyze data, you report conclusions, and then either your hypothesis is supported or refuted. Right? This is how the process goes. Mm -hmm. Now, this is how it goes, basically. Do you have knowledge of Bhagavad Gita that we listen to and think about and contemplate upon pretty much every day now? Then it tells you, put in the effort, let go of the attachment to result, your anxiety will reduce, right? That's the hypothesis that we have been talking about, right? Now you test with an experiment, you pick up any of whatever job that you are doing. It could be something that you are doing right now. You put in your best effort without expectations of a promotion or whatever it is, right? Outcome is outcome oriented thought process. You challenge that in your, you know, laboratory of life in whatever you are doing. And then see if it enables you to focus better and you, you know, when you become more mindful and it helps you achieve better results. And of course, no stress or let relatively lesser stress when you simply try to do that or no stress whatsoever. You do that and that is how the loop will be closed. So that observation itself would give you an assurance that the principle that Lord Krishna is talking about actually works. And then what happens? You get, over time, you get better and better at that in practicing it because it worked for you. And then you know that it is it surely works. And then you keep on getting better at it. And the good thing about it is when you practice it in one walk of life, you can simply extend it to other walks of life as well. Right? In anything and everything that you do, you start implementing it, practicing it until it becomes a mindset. And then you are getting closer to the concept of performing karm yoga as well or non-binding karma as well. Okay, so there are three kinds of works. We have spoken about it. Um, quick recap, the one that we do with mind. Mind and senses are there, right? So mind, senses are not involved. Then mind is not involved, senses are involved. And in the third one, mind and senses both are involved. The point here is that God gives us the work is basically what is going on in your mind. Anything that you do with your body and your senses does not count for anything in spirituality. In the world, it may count for something, right? For example, you may be just doing a physical drill around something, right? Um, smiling back at somebody. But what's going on in your mind is what God looks at, okay? You get credit for what is going on in your head, not what you are doing through your senses, you know, what you're speaking through your mouth um, or what you're doing through your hands or legs doesn't matter at all. What matters is what's going on here in your mind. And that that makes the 
whole lot of a difference in your spiritual journey because it's the engagement of mind that we need to focus on more than anything else. Okay. So that conditioning that we have needs to be reversed and corrected. What is the conditioning? Conditioning is just reciting it, right? Om Jaya Jagti Share, um, Tan Man Dhan Sab Tera Kya Lage Mera and all that stuff. See, we do so many things almost in an autopilot mode without even thinking or engaging our mind in that practice or working towards that principle. Okay, if I have recited that, you know, what does it mean? Do I, why do I need to keep my mind to get closer to uh, what I have spoken about. So it's the engagement of mind that matters more than the physical drill that we are doing through our body or our senses. So these are the kind of works we spoke about. And then we briefly spoke about the mathematics of karma as well. So any karma that you do when that you are doing through your uh, senses, it's a multiplication with zero. Even though you might be sitting in front of God and doing all your aratis, you might not be adding even an inch forward, you know, in your spiritual journey. Okay, that could happen as well. And on the other side, you might be doing a regular work. It could be a household work. It could be a professional work. But if you're thinking about God and offering the results to God, then you are progressing spiritually. So visually, optically, it may not, you may not even see or understand what's going on. But what God looks at is on the inside inside your head, not on the outside, what you are doing on the outside. Yes, Andhra, you had a question? Yeah. Um, so, like, what about the in-between state? Like, if one person is practicing to have remembrance of God, um, but still are not able, are not there, but performing worldly duties. So, that is still better than not doing anything, right? So Practicing it, you have that intent, right? Hmm. And you get credit for that. You do have that intent and you will get help from God as well. Anything that we do with an intent which aligns with the purpose of this creation, end of the day, God, God is telling me, why is God saying, okay, keep me in your thoughts all the time? Is he some kind of an egoistic person? Of course not. He's saying, help me, help you. So when you're trying to make an attempt to do that, of course, you are aligning to the purpose of this creation so you will get credit for that and you will get help and grace from God and Guru as well to, to strengthen that practice because it's a journey. Nothing is a unit step function that you wake up and all of a sudden, boom, you know, everything starts falling in place. No. And uh, God also understands that. So we need to keep on trying our best and see how, how we can strengthen that practice. So, of course, we'll get credit for that. It's not zero or one in case of getting grace in that in this particular context. Okay, so this is where we had left last week talking about that multiplication with zero. In this case, you are multiplying your spiritual gain with zero and in this case, you are multiplying your binding actions with zero. Okay, You're not incurring any binding action at all when you are keeping God in your thoughts. Right? If you look at the example of uh, Hanumanji killing so many people or Arjun killing so many people in the war in God's accounting book it's a multiplication with zero it was not at all a murder why because they were doing it as a service to God not for their own gain they were not doing it with a sense of vengeance or anything they were doing it with a sense of purpose and for the pleasure of God and then it becomes a multiplication with zero at that point now, there are two aspects to any activity. We spoke about it, you know, um, intention matters. You could be killing somebody out of hatred, jealousy, greed, etc. Then it becomes a binding karma. It's punishable by law. Or you could be killing somebody as a matter of duty, like policemen might end up doing that, or a, or a person who's fighting a war for their country might end up doing that. They are eligible for rewards. It's the consciousness that you bring to the table that makes all the difference. Okay, I'll tell you this story. Another one, basically, the perform in anything that is performed in self-interest has karmic reactions and entanglements to it. Anything that is performed in self-interest. Now, self-interest could be ang greed. It could be envy. It could be anger as well. I'll tell you a story of I think it's for uh, Guru Gobind Singh. Gee, he was fighting a battle or, or a, you know, a war with Mughals. And uh, when they were having that sword fight, with one of the persons, they were having a sword fight for a while. 
And then finally, the other guy, he was at his mercy. He lost his sword. So he was at his mercy. And just when he, he was about to slay him like this, right, he lost his sword and they have been fighting for a while. So this guy, he spits back at him. Okay, he spits back at him. So what happens? See, you are fighting somebody. You're already not liking that person. And then he spits back at him. So normally what would happen? You would hurry to kill that person. But he stopped. He did not kill him. And he simply turned his back towards him. But the other soldier, he asked him, why did you leave him? You were fighting him and he was at your mercy. Why did you leave him? He said, previously, I was fighting him as a matter of duty. Okay, It was a, with a sense of purpose and a duty that he was fighting. But the moment he spit back at me, I got enraged. All of a sudden, anger came inside my mind. And if I had killed him in anger, then it would have been a sin. He understood that principle. So that level of awareness that he had. So the point here is, any action that you... And on the other side, like if you are performing an action, let's say in our job... If you're doing okay, let me do this and I'll have promotion and then I'll enjoy the prestige or I'll enjoy the hefty paycheck and I'll enjoy the vacation and I'll do this, that. Anything that we do with the self and motive in mind, it becomes binding. And that is why God is saying, let me reduce, you know, remove that equation for you at all. Just offer the fruits to me because the fruit anyway, you don't control. It's not that you control and you can, um, you know, guarantee anything for yourself. So why not just leave the fruit and leave it to me and do it for my pleasure. That way you will not incur any binding karma. And if you do perform in actions in devotion, like Arjun was given an instruction by Lord Krishna, Sarveshu Kaleshu Maam Anusmar Yudhashya, that just think of me all the moment, you know, all the while, and then perform your duty, which is fighting a war in this particular case, and then you will do fine. So when we do that, it is a freedom from bondage and then it is a freedom from birth death cycle. That is the ultimate price that we are going after, right? Freedom from birth death. That's not the ultimate price. I mean, that's one of the things you would get as part of building that consciousness. The top price is, of course, getting God Seva, God realized post God realization, having an opportunity to serve him in person. But it would result in freedom from bondage and birth and death life cycle. Why? Because when we do it with a, with a desire motivated by our self-interest, then it deepens our belief that there is happiness in this world. When that belief is deepened, you keep on seeking happiness in this world. And when you keep on seeking happiness in this world, where there is none, God says like an indulgent father, all right, you think there is happiness, I'll give you another opportunity. And when you get another opportunity, you get further implicated in karma because you have still not understood there's no happiness. You Again, your mind keeps on tricking you to say, you know what, if I get this, I'll be happy. If I get this, I'll be happy. Or, or only if I had this, I would have been happy. Or why did this not work the way I had, you know? So all those things uh, continue to bring us back into this world because God will not tell you, no, 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 I will, you know, not give you this. I, you know, I will not let you do that. You have to come to me. And then only you will be happy. You will not say that. It's a choice that we are making every moment. So anything that is done, motivated by our self-interest, has karmic reaction to it, and results in entanglements. And anything that is done, performed in devotion as a matter of service to God for his pleasure, is it's it gives us freedom from bondage of birth, death, life cycle, basically, that cycle itself. So, application to practical life. So, how do we... Sorry continue? to interrupt, a quick question. Maybe, will sure. there be no credit at least for doing a ritual even as a mechanical drill instead of doing Vikarma? Good question. It's an interesting question. Um, now, something is better than nothing, of course. At least it's bringing in a discipline. But the idea is to go beyond that empty ritual because that's a means to an end. That's not an end in itself. Now, how much credit do you get? What credit you are getting is build, taming in your mind, right? At least having that faith. But if you're performing that ritual, you know how many rituals we have performed ever since our inception, not even inception, ever since we have taken births, countless, infinite. That means we were missing something. 
in those rituals because of which we could not progress. And that missing part was not having our mind in God. Okay. So what happens with rituals? Rituals are good. It, it is basically the end result of rituals is all right, take your mind to God. But if we continue to do that, they end up becoming empty rituals. Now something is better than nothing. Right? If somebody is not even doing that, of course we are doing better than them. But is it good enough? It's not. It has to reach that level where our mind is going to God. Otherwise those become empty rituals and we may have a false sense of confidence that we are doing something, we are religious, we, we we do you know our puja two or three times a day, but at the end of the day, it's not really taking us too far because our mind is not there. So that is how it goes. If you supplement rituals with remembrance of God and taking your mind, nothing like it. And uh, that is how it goes. But if you do rituals, something is better than nothing, nothing more than that. If your mind is not in God. Okay, so how do we continue performing our daily activities but perform and transform their outcome? So, Sandhya has raised her hand. Yeah, Sandhya, go ahead. Dad, sorry, I just had a follow-up question on what you just discussed. So if someone knows at the back of their mind that they need to have their mind engaged in God, but in terms of practice, maybe it is not there, as I said, it's empty rituals or whatever. Still, as you said, it is better, right? Because eventually God notes the intent. And uh, yeah, instead of thinking about this, yeah. it's better to do this, right? At, at the least. Right. That's true. Eventually, but we have to pull that knowledge and start practicing it as well. So just having the best good intention is not, right? It doesn't take you. That knowledge has to be activated when it is needed. Or at least we need to get better at that, practicing it. If that knowledge is there at the back of our mind, but then when it comes to actually doing kirtans or actually doing the puja, knowledge is there, but again, we are careless, then you know we're not doing ourselves a great favor there. That story of a policeman that goes, you know, the, the policeman was sleeping with his wife and then they hear something outside and then his wife says, you know what, I think there's a thief in our house. He said, of course, I'm a policeman who else won't know better than me that there's a thief here. He said, I think he has already broken into our houses. Yes, I'm a policeman. I know that. This is what I've done all my life. He said, I think he has started taking out the cash and all the valuables inside from inside as well. He said, of course, I know it because I'm a policeman, right? This is what the thief would do. He said, I think he's already taken it and running away now. He said, of course, I'm a policeman. I know that, but he didn't do anything about it. And the thief ran away. So the point is, we understand that we have to bring God into our active consciousness when we are performing this. That knowledge is there, but that knowledge has to be activated. We cannot be careless after that. So we'll get credit, but then if we don't build that practice and get better with time, then what's the point of having that knowledge? Every time we sit with in satsang, every time we do puja, we have to force, force our mind to build that practice that, okay, this is a time... The world resides in my head all the time, but this time I'm not going to let world enter my mind. This time is only one-on-one -on -one with God. So that practice needs to be deepened for us to take benefit. Otherwise, mere knowledge is not any helpful, right? It just becomes an information in our head if we are not able to do something with it. Make sense? Did I answer the question? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, you did. I, I was just asking that one should not be like stressing about it, that this is not happening. And what do I like? You know what I'm trying to say is, you know, you want to do this. You are in the process of doing this, but it will take time. Agreed. That is will take time. I'm not saying that, OK, we'll, it's like guilty now. There's no future. It will take time. It is a journey. What I'm saying is we need to be mindful about it. Now that we have understood the knowledge, how better we can get in this practice is all that matters. And it's going to be a journey. Somebody will crawl, somebody will run, somebody will sprint, somebody will take an elevator, somebody will go in a spacecraft. So the speed may vary, but the point is that knowledge has to be activated. We have to put sincere efforts to activate that knowledge. Otherwise, it, that knowledge will be like just sitting there idle, not helping us out. And then feeling guilty, a devotee never, you know, gets into the trap of feeling guilty and stuff like that because it's a negative emotion that can paralyze you, hold you back. 
and if you're just feeling guilty oh my god i don't do anything and just that, that doesn't take you anywhere we simply learn and and make a resolve to get better at it because a devotee is always optimistic it's not like we have gotten a knowledge now we'll wake up as a saint tomorrow it doesn't work that way even a let's say a, a, a you know a serial drug addict somebody who's addicted to drugs it takes a while to rehabilitate them and we are also serially conditioned souls so it's not going to happen overnight our mind will again go back to the old old, old habits old things so we have to systematically and gradually work on it that is what it is even if you are improving it god will be pleased because now we are making an attempt and a sincere effort to get better at that and it's going to be a journey of course for all of us because it's not a unit step function it's not like now if we become over what you call that anxious about okay why am i not improving why is it not happening it should have happened that is also not a good understanding you got to be realistic around it it happens it will take time and if you compare yourself with your previous version you would know that you have come a long way so as long as we are progressing further and not regressing that's fine okay there's no reason or point to feel guilty about anything yes you're Radhe Radhe Nitin ji. So since we are talking about progressing, what I have felt in my case that it doesn't always progress. It goes ups and down like a wave. So I have tried my best not to feel guilty and I have tried my best to continue on this path. I have tried my best to hold on to it. But there are days when I feel like I should I should have put in i should have put more effort so in those situations uh, what suggestions do you have is that itself is a sign of progress right where you you feel the need that you could have done better than that not make a resolve that you'll try better next time around and again evaluate yourself did you do your best that is the way forward on this path falling into a guilt trap is not the right way of looking at it okay you don't fall into a guilt trap and not do anything about it that's pointless because it's a negative energy right you you be strict with yourself and make a resolve as long and to improve and then you keep on evaluating yourself and then see how better you can continue to improve but feeling guilty and then becoming negative and despondent and disappointed that is not how it's meant to be okay all right thank you nitin ji radhe yes preeti ji radhe 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 uh nitin ji i have uh tried to do several several things like small steps and i, I i'm struggling with the same thing i get into it and then i stick to it then i again fall off again get back stick to it it's been a story of my life for many many things spirituality weight you know mm -hmm. um i can see a big progress after attending the uh you know bhagavad gita lectures plus everything but again i mean i feel that and then i give up on many many things like okay my mind says okay you're going to try but you're never going to achieve this so what's the point so i i end up quitting on many things and i struggle with it every day <laughs> any help with that i know it's uh, keep trying keep trying but i'm like already trying for years and that happens the self talk is not very good no, that's fine you keep trying i mean that's the thing it's not about getting you know falling down seven times it's about getting up an eighth time that is the key guys awesome. there was a guru uh, so you know the they used to work in coal mines so there was a basket which was all black so the guru said to the disciple why don't you go to the river and bring in some water from there so mm. he there and brought in some water okay but then the the basket had perforation holes in it and it could not retain any water so every the entire water was out and he said go mm. back get water he again goes back gets water again he could not get anything back he said go back he made him do some 10 15 trips like that finally mm. decided to ask guruji i am not able to get water what's the point 
he said look at the basket and he looked at the basket it when he started it was all black and now it is all clean so we oh but we, we let's not underestimate the power of this knowledge okay some change somewhere we may not be satisfied with that but if we are simply contemplating upon it and there is a desire for us to change and we keep on contemplating on it something is changing you know the speed may be change but something is changing for sure so you have to be optimistic around it and and pray to god and some magic is happening and there are times right when our sanskars are there they keep fluctuating and and they play tricks we may find it hard at times those kind of situations would happen but we a devotee remains eternally optimist we don't give up hope okay you might be struggling right now but there could be a time where you will will you you'll just find it you know it's like you are able to bulldoze your way through those those times could happen as well okay so stay optimistic the good thing is you you are mindfully doing it right you think about uh -huh. lose hope that there's no point in doing that okay that's not the way we should look at it keep trying hard that's fine if you fall down that's fine you again try it and see where it takes you so that's the way fortunately you know i raised my son when i was in that mental trap of not having this much spiritual knowledge and depressive and not having good habits and when he came to visit me he was in that level of you know mindset so i went back to i mean i have progressed a lot since then after joining uh, our sessions and lot what not but i see that oh my god i was there and he is there and i don't know how to work on him or how to pull him off and then i'm like again the mind says all kind of negative self talk and it just i go back and forth and i pull myself out and then i'm attaching my mind to god so it's a constant struggle for me <laughs> and oh. i don't know how to have my son go through this path which is what i want him to do even though he's like in his early 20s i'm like when how can i do it and he won't listen to me because i was not there when i was raising him so it's a it's a another guilt trip as well no you know? is, i need to go past that as well end of the day it's an individual's journey right um, and the reason you feel bad or the reason you feel so uh, what you strongly about getting your son here is your attachment to him right you want to do something good for him but you have an attachment aspect of it there as well so let's right. let's be realistic around you know we can show the path as best as we can but that's not the mission of our life to get somebody here on this path right uh -huh. uh, saints come for that this is. and and we know that you know, what is the success rate right how many people actually start following very few people so you do your best in this situation but guilt trip is not the way forward on this as a devotee as a follower of as a spiritualist guilt is not something that you should you know get stuck in and then think about whenever any negative thought comes in anybody said just think of it how many people on this earth i think it's going to be a 7 and 1/2 billion now actually get to a spark of spiritual knowledge right? probably a fraction of it out of those who get a spark how many of them actually get an opportunity to acquire it systematically very few how many of them actually get a guidance from a proper guru very few how many of them actually get to contemplate it on a daily basis even fewer and we are one of those few people right we have been fortunate and blessed to have that so if you think about it you can fill your heart with a lot of positivity and optimism and there won't be any space for any negativity or guilt for that matter we are you know it's like so many things are falling in place and it's all happening because of god's grace so when we think that way it will fill our heart with a lot of positivity and enthusiasm and the negativity will automatically make way for it okay priti ji let's move on arti ji i think i'm seeing arti ji after a long time radha radha arti ji how are you doing last time i radha think radha. about the price of tomatoes and after that we haven't had a discussion so please go ahead radha radha nitin ji how are you doing good how are you doing good thank you uh I just um, heard Preeti's question, and so correct me if I'm wrong. 
but if I may offer a suggestion, uh, science of mind management, uh, chapter seven or eight talks about the power of se positive self-talk. So if the self-talk is currently negative, only the person who's thinking negatively can change it to positive. Right? So the stories that we're telling ourselves that you can't do this, you can just as easily tell yourself you can do this. Reverse. And in, exactly. In Patanjali Yoga Sutras, there is, a, there is an aphorism that directly says that when you have negative thoughts, you practice the direct opposite thought, which would be a positive thought. And then uh, chapter three of Science of Mind Management also discusses how to change your habits. So it all leads into this thing where if you're saying, I can't do this, you can just as easily tell yourself, I can do this. What am I missing? Is it a piece of knowledge? Am I not thinking correctly about this? And then that will help break the current negative patterns. Great. Thank you, RTD. I was thinking you had other RTDs and other RTDs used to talk about uh price of tomatoes but yeah that's a very wonderful nugget you gave thank you so much so yeah science of mind management you can get that book if you don't have a personal copy please go through that Swamiji has tackled these topics very systematically right he's talking about the self-talk aspect of it you know the things that we keep on repeating in our head with certain kind of neural pathways are formed and then that those are called ruts right in Canada they say choose your rut wisely so once you are in a rut you are stuck in it for next 15 20 kilometers similarly those thought patterns become a second nature to you and how do you break that by doing reverse chintan substitute that with a positive one okay i i cannot substitute it with i can and soon you will realize your mind will start cooperating with you better so it's a conditioning or programming your mind yourself right and we tune into a particular channel every day which is a negative channel or a positive channel whichever one you tune to that is how your mind will become Right? Like Swamiji says, is nuske ko azmao ke yad rakna ye baat is nuske ko azmao jaisa man ko banao ke vesa hi ban jao ke. So, however you shape your mind, that is how you'll end up becoming. So, if you have got a neg negative pattern, I mean, you can go through that book. Swamiji has tackled that very systematically, like you know, um, RT was telling telling you about. So, take help from proper knowledge. There's always tools and techniques you can employ to break down a habit that has been troubling you for long. So even if you have a chronic thought pattern, it can be dismantled very systematically. And there's tons of literature available that Swamiji has made it so palatable for us that you can subscribe to and take benefit from. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, Sapanaji. So here, ego is edging God out and here, everything for God only. When we start doing that, the karmic aspect is taken care of. Now you can have law of karma work in your favor. And it will take you closer to the concept of surrender as well. And surrender is what we need to be working towards, right? That is where Bhagavad Gita ends as well. Sarv dharmam paritya je maam ekam sharnam brat. So perfect your surrender and the job is done. Yes, Aparna ji. Wanted to add something? Uh, Radhe Radhe Nupin ji. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, my problem is diff different actually. I if actually fall into the happy trap. I don't progress fast. I'm content with small progress and then when I'm in misery, I start praying. Why am I in this misery and remind myself that uh, this human life is so rare. I need to progress fast. You know, my Swamiji is working relentlessly for all of us and I push myself um, the only good thing that I am doing is attending the classes continuously. So, you know, keeping the knowledge on the top of my mind and really work um, on deliberate practice on my virtues. So that is a little bit helping me. That's good. I know it's it's a good dose to start your day with. It keeps your thoughts aligned, right? And like Maharaj used to say, Swamiji also that, um, you know, the contemplation is the key. The more we contemplate on this knowledge, the more we'll be equipped to actually call it into action when we need it. Otherwise, this knowledge slips very quickly. So, Chintan, Manan, Nidityasan, the three-step process for us to take it to the stage of Nidityasan, we should have really contemplated on it deeply. Just like a cow ruminates the grass. And then it becomes our second nature and, and you know that knowledge will will be activated de facto or all by itself 
when the situation would come. But until that happens, we have to keep revising it. Even though some of it might seem redundant, right? We have gone through karam, vikaram, akaram, these concepts. But the more you chew upon it, the something new will come out of it, right? Something will strike chord with you. So we need to keep on contemplating it, you know, repeatedly until it becomes our second nature. And that will take a while, right? It's a journey. Yes, Pratusha, you wanted to add something? Uh, that is, uh, uh, yeah, I, I was, I had two things in my mind. Uh, one thing is, uh, the karma is basically consequence of our actions, right? So the more we keep doing a particular action, it can be the thought process also in any way, positive or negative, the consequences more of that will come, right? So if we are able to, uh, you know, recognize that, for example, we get irritated for some reason or we get angry or we get guilty whatever, uh, sarcasm. So if we work keep, you know, if we do that, that, we are inviting that in our life. So that is one thing. So if there is someone who is doing it or we ourselves is doing, we are actually strengthening that mental pattern. So what is the, the biggest thing that actually helped uh, me from you uh, in the last uh, one, no, one, one, one month is one story that you told me about Viktor Frankl who was in Auschwitz prison, his, you know, his wife and daughter was killed, but he decided that his mental attitude will be my emotion is in my control. Every time something happens, I specifically, I, I have started, you know, that was my nugget that it really well, helped me. My emotion is in my control. I keep repeating that and it has done really wonders. I, I'm very, very calm. So, uh, so that is one thing. Another thing was about uh, the, the Preeti G saying her, her son uh, was is in his teens, eighteen, right? So I've heard uh, some in some lecture, not from Swamiji, but a psychologist saying that we can actually change our kid up to age twenty eight. Twenty eight. The best, yeah, twenty eight, and the best way is actually to make them our friend, recognize their strength, and. Their weaknesses. We generally try to impose our things on them, but rather we become their friends and we support them and try to recognize them, appreciate them, and bring them around. You know, and then we will start listening. It happens slowly, but that's the way we can approach. Things. Cool, Pratisha ji. Thank you for that uh, nugget. So twenty eight. That's so thank you, sir. That sounds pretty promising. Yeah. And if you liked Victor Frankl, I think another story that Swamiji narrates is of Helen Keller as well. Helen Keller, I mean, she did not, if you look at it, she was deaf, blind, she could not hear, could not speak. You know, just by touching water and things like that, that is how she started educating herself and her attitude towards life, which it's a beautiful present and what she ended up achieving and the way she looked at things around her, that's pretty inspirational as well, despite having so many handicaps. On the other hand, if you have Elvis Presley, people like those who had fame, wealth, money, the which regular people only crave for at his feet, but ended up taking the, their own life. So this is, you know, it's a choice that we are making and it's only the quality of mind that we can work on. That's the only thing we have are under control. The better the quality of mind, the more controlled we, we our emotions would be and the closer we'll be to joy, peace, happiness that we've been seeking about, right? That's why Swamiji has spent so much of time writing those books so that, you know, something would click to us and we can focus on this aspect of our spirituality, uh, which is the foundation. Right? It's all, all the game of mind. End of the day, cleansing our mind or antakaran, as they call it, is, is the only agenda of human life. Rest all is self-created. Yes, Anita Ji. By the yeah. way, we'll talk about, talk about, when we talk about, when we talk about, Arma, yeah, Anita ji, sorry. Uh, I'll, I just wanted to uh, provide a bit of a teaser for tomorrow. We're going to talk about Pap and Punya. Okay, that we usually get hung up with. So it's going to be a fascinating discussion around it. What is Pap? What is Punya? Because Arjun is also being called to action. You know, we'll we'll talk about the 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 different um, phases that uh, Lord Krishna takes Arjun through, and uh, during the course of this discussion. And uh, we'll talk about what is Pap, what is Punya. We'll get into the deeper discussion around it tomorrow. Yes, Anita ji, please go ahead. Yeah, Radhe, Radhe. Interesting, Nitinji, for tomorrow's session. 
uh, for uh, PTG's uh, question, I just wanted to add up like uh, one of the Swamiji's video. Swamiji says like uh, initially I have to put in more of uh, power energy, just like uh, when we launch a satellite, it needs more power to launch launch the um, in the initial stages. Later on, it doesn't require that much of energy. So to inculcate any habit, uh, especially the good habit, we need to um, have more uh, practice. Like, uh, for example, take the example of a doctor, like exercise uh, for uh, losing uh, weight. Or if we want to, to uh, achieve that required goal, if we are doing 10 sit-ups, increase the dosage, like do 20, 30, 40, uh, depending on the requirements. Similarly, uh, like Swamiji is saying, you have to put in your hard effects, efforts, more, put more efforts and increase the dosages. Uh, there you can get better success. And also practicing uh, uh, six points of surrender in that particularly the um, uh, reminding the graces what we got from God already every day sincerely writing the journal what the positive things happened in your life because mind pulls uh, always in the negative direction it just uh, uh, sees the negativity in any situation so for that uh, uh, it's better to start wherever we are like the starting point okay so we should not be lamenting on the uh, past okay I have uh, not done in the past. It's repeating same thing again and again. And uh, you also haven't given the Elvis Presley's uh, example. Uh, there, uh, that his life uh, gives uh, the um, learning that uh, we should be taking charge of our mind. Otherwise, uh, other people will take charge of our mind and the situation can uh, take charge of our mind. So it's better to take care of our charge of our mind better than others in the situation. Uh, thank you, Radhe Radhe. Thank you, Anita Ji. Wonderfully uh, stated. That's true. Um, the end of the day, it's a game of, you know, controlling our mind and, and making it a storehouse. It generates about 60,000 thoughts a day, right? And how do we take it to a place where it can only generate wholesome productive thoughts it's not the case as, as yet and that is why spirituality or what we are doing on a day-to-day -day basis is a stepping stone towards that the more we purify our antakaran the more we subscribe to these timeless principles the better the quality of mind is going to get and of course but the closer we will get to the joy peace bliss that we have been seeking as well so yes habit and you know you can actually get into that with Swamiji talks in great details uh, how to get into that habit mode and how to, you know, do reverse chintan when you are struggling with some of these things and uh, exercising your willpower around it. More importantly, then willpower is your why power, where you are, if you are intellectually convinced, you don't even need to bring in your willpower, right? You can exert your willpower to make a good habit. And after you made it a habit, then you can use the same willpower to add another good habit and so all those things are spoken about in great detail in you know these books so do take advantage of these resources that Swamiji has created for us okay any more questions around this we'll continue we'll conclude this topic tomorrow by talking about when we talk about karma I think one of the things that befuddles or confuse people is what is pap what is punya Okay, if you end up doing punya, is that good enough and all that stuff so we'll talk about it in more detail tomorrow because Arjun if you look at it he was told by Krishna, Lord Krishna, you know, do it as a matter of your duty, your kshatriya. And then that is where this dialogue starts to unfold because Arjun says that, okay, what happens if I don't fight? Or what happens if I fight? And what happens if I fight and I win? And what happens if I fight and I get killed? And what happens if I just don't fight and flee away? All these questions. And then Lord Krishna goes on to expound on the topic of the deeper secrets around the how to perform any act or do your work. So we'll talk about that tomorrow. Any more questions on related to this topic? Um, what we have spoken about or any, anybody wanted to share because we are closing in uh, on our one hour thing before we move to our devotional segment where today we are going to 
इंट्रोड्यूस सुमेरो सुमेरन करले मना दैट भजन सीरीज सो वी विल हैव टू और थ्री पार्टिसिपेंट्स हु आर गोइंग टू चैट दैट एंड वी विल कवर दैट इंटायर भजन सो इट्स अ वेरी डीप फिलोसफी एंड एट द सेम टाइम what we discuss end of the day we have to you know put it to practice and remember god around it as well it will be an opportunity to do that as well so that bhajan we will get started now that it's a new year it's a auspicious time to get started with that right any last questions or any thing on the chat from anyone before we get into our devotional segment please fill out the feedback tracker if not already uh, always good to hear uh, any feedback that you may have even at 78 okay this year will be my year keep that in your the mind it will get cleansed okay that's good if it happens even better all right so yes uh, so that's a race so should we take sure. yeah sure let's quickly take yeah. them uh sanjeev you want to i mean not really anything deep but i just wanted to mention this that this definition of ego is just amazing so thank you for sharing this i love this everything for god only so i am going to contemplate about that and second thing uh, like we were discussing this i think pratusha ji mentioned that till the age of 28 uh, there is a scope for uh, like kids are teachable or transformable but i at least yeah i mean that's i think scientific studies and research uh, appreciate it and respect it but i also feel that uh, with my experience seeing people around like even at the age of 78 or whatever uh, bhagavad gita has the power to transform anybody so yes. that i think is uh, really amazing that way so yeah just wanted to mention that this knowledge is powerful i don't know why you limited it at 78 i would say 98 or 100 i just wanted to say a number it can be anything okay yes it can go on for you know however long person is able to their faculty is working and they can you know listen to this knowledge or think about it yes it is pretty transformative thank you sandhya for that yes pratusha yes uh radha is saying so i have a question that is suppose we have a certain you know vice okay and we uh, some negative trait and we have actually uh, and that's a part of our product so, you know we have we have been working on it and the things were coming and suppose we we did it we uh, you know changed us now we have we must have done that many many lifetimes right so the whole sanchit is there so will it vanish the sanchit part Because we have already worked on this, Sanchit. No, see, it's that's an interesting question. Actually, um, I will tell you my limited understanding around it. So, if if you have let's say some vice, right? Because of your past sanskars, past sanskars is there. That means uh, there was a deficiency or some gap in your, um, you know, spiritual wealth, so to say, that could have eradicated, right? Right now, if you have already acquired that, Lord Krishna and Bhagavad Gita says, I'm going to preserve it for you. so it's not like he's going to make you struggle with the same thing again if you've learned the lesson if you pass the test done you move on to the next thing so it's not that okay if you've conquered a vice in this life let's say somebody is a incorrigible drinker or something right some kind of a vice they are they, they get angry with every other thing and they have mindfully consciously worked on it in this life so from tamas to rajas to satva and probably even beyond they have gone to that stage Lord Krishna, uh, being a merciful father, he is assured in Bhagavad Gita, I am going to preserve it for you. So I don't think, yes, of course, the sanchit you have to deal with as a future prarabd. But are you going to deal with that particular uh, vice? I don't know. If you have conquered it, you have learned the lesson around it. I think you'll you'll probably Lord Krishna is going to they do the yoga shame right? They preserve it for you, God and Guru. That is what my little understanding is. You can ask Swami Ji right in SMX or one of the forums. But yeah. The good thing about it is Lord Krishna preserves things. Otherwise, we are on a suicidal mission. If he resets us, we will never get out of it, right? So he said, "Okay, I'll preserve it for you. I'll give it to you as a gift once you have conquered something." So if you have this much homework, we do this much this in this lifetime. Less is remaining. So whatever we do, he is going to preserve it and give it to us whenever we come back as a human. Uh, in due course of time, it manifests, right? It may not manifest immediately, but he knows when is the appropriate time for it to manifest, so that you don't have to deal with it again. good question thank you yes rahul just wanted to 
your voice is uh, breaking you your lips are moving but the voice is not coming again the same thing is happening something is Maybe not maybe you right. want to turn off your camera and try yeah Yeah, you wanted to. Okay. Yeah. So let's make the announcements. Uh, okay. I think Rahul is trying to join again. If he comes back again, let's hear from him. Rahul, are you back? Otherwise, let's make the announcements and then we can move on to our uh, next segment. Yeah. The feedback from the husband. Yeah. You said Rahul? something? Go ahead, please. Yeah. Rahul, are you yes, we can hear you now. No. No, it's gone again. You know what? Um, Try turning off your camera. It's, yeah, trying turning off your camera. Or, uh, yeah. No, I think yeah. it's it's not allowing you to speak more than a word. And then it just mutes you off. I don't know what's going on. Maybe you want to type it. Uh, yeah, we can't hear you. Good thing we can see your expressions, but we can't make out what you're saying. Something very good, that much I can tell you, but exactly what it is. Yes, Sandhya, you wanted to add something? You can make the announcements otherwise. Announcements, Amrita Vaniji will make, but I just heard this from her and I couldn't stop myself from sharing it. She's saying that it is today the third anniversary of uh, our daily wisdom from Bhagavad Gita classes. Today it was, huh? okay. That's... First of all, congratulations to you and everybody else. But secondly, we have to celebrate this. So we should be deciding and announcing about this today itself. Let's do that. Let's do a celebration next week, third anniversary, like we did our second last year. anniversary last year. We will do 1,000 days as well, Amrita Maniji. Thanks for the reminder. Although technically we started, I think, on 22nd or 24th of no, December. No, that was actually info session that we started info on 24th session. December was the info actually, session that we started. So from Jan 1st, 20, yeah, that was when we started the first session. Thank you. Yes, yes, that's true. See, I'm jet lagged. That's why my memory is everything. Is <laughs> but thank you for the reminder. So next week, let's pick up a date and let's uh, do a three-year celebration. We can figure out, you know, what all we want to do. Like uh, we had a pretty good celebration last time as well. For uh, Maybe we can take some group pictures as well that day. Um, so thank you for the reminder. Yes, we have completed three years. It's, uh, we are going to become a toddler pretty soon, right? So... And Rahul Ji, as usual, has sent his uh, Radha Govind Geet lines in the context of our discussion. Okay, okay. That's what That's... he wanted to say. If you want, I can read it out. Sure. Saal saal bita jai Govind Radhe ab to hathi lo man hari me laga de. Very nice. Thank you, Rahul. For sharing that. Great. Yes, Ipshita ji, you wanted to say something? I wanted to uh, request you that uh, the picture that you have taken for Gita Jayanti, can we have that? Yes, we, we can share. Let's share it in the group, right? Uh, we can share it in the group and also on the portal. Tomorrow we can share it in the class as well. Let's share it in okay. the class. And we'll share some pictures from Banara as well, okay? I really want to, I think we shared only one picture. We'll share more pictures from Banara. Yes, because we, we, it was an amazing, immersive experience with Swamiji there. And for me, personally, it was the first one. And I got to meet a lot of participants there as well. So we'll share some pictures from all the Gita, uh, our class participants, um, you know, who were able to make it and uh, share it in the class as well. So, Okay. So with that said, uh, let's move on to our uh, devotional segment. Uh, from there, if you can pull up the screen and then we can take maybe three hands today and uh, sing a couple of lines out of this. Who will get started? You want to do the honors, Sandhya? I can do. After very long in having the devotional segment. Excited. That too on Jan 1st. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this, these are the lines. Uh, this is the bhajan written by uh, written as well as the music for it is composed by Maharaj Ji, Jagat Gurutam Kripalu Ji Maharaj. Uh, and I'll just get started. So Meerayne Karele Manao 
छिने छिने राधा रमना सुमिरन कर ले मना छिन छिन राधा रमना हरी गुरु दो अपना गहु इनके शरणा हरी गुरु दो अपना गहु इनके शरणा तन very nice thank you anybody else who wants to sing that very nice thank you for that swati ji sir yes swati ji please go ahead go ahead. yeah radhe radhe happy new year to all to miran kar le mana chin chin radha mana to miran kar le mana छिन छिन राधा रमना हरि गुरु दोई अपना गहु इन के शरणा हरि गुरु दोई अपना गहु इन के शरणा थैंक यू राधे राधे थैंक यू राधे राधे वेरी नाइस थैंक यू स्वाति जी आई सी मीनू जी हैज wants to sing as well please go ahead meenu ji uh, happy bhakti divas to all happy bhakti divas sumiran kar le mana chin chin radha ramana sumiran kar le mana chin chin radha ramana hari guru दो अपना गहु इन के शरणा हरि गुरु दो अपना गहु इन के शरणा सुमिरन कर ले मना छिन छिन राधा रमना राधे 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 थैंक यू मीनू जी सो आई वुड एनकरेज पार्टिसिपेंट टू पुट इट इन द फीडबैक ट्रैकर सो दैट आई कैन पिक अप new three hands every day today we'll make an exception and take everybody but uh, you'll have to put it in the feedback tracker and that way we can pick your name if there are more than three i'll have to spin the wheel okay we'll have a brief discussion about it as well because it's a pretty powerful bhajan as we go along so but let's take the remaining hands for today go yes ahead, uh, hey mamani ji let's go radha radha nitin ji radha radha everyone happy bhakti divas happy bhakti divas so meran kar le mana chin chin radha ramana so meran kar le mana chin chin radha ramana hari guru do hi apna gaho in ke sharana hari guru do hi apna gaho in ke sharana Radhe Radhe, thank you. Hi, Simangani Ji. Radhe Radhe. So, thank you, everybody, for singing it beautifully and very soulfully. It's a very deep bhajan from Brajras Madhuri. So, what it says is, um, meditate every moment, O oh my mind, on the delighter of Radha Rani's heart. And who's delighter of Radha Rani's heart? Any prizes for guessing? It's Krishna himself, right? And it says, Hari and Guru alone are ours. They are our two sambandhis. they are the only one who actually accompany us in every lifetime so let's say we have accepted somebody as a guru with wholeheartedly and that relationship is established 
then God is anyway, he has to accompany us, he has no choice. God has to accompany us no matter what we end up becoming. Guru will also join the party with us. Okay? He doesn't leave you until you cross over the material ocean. That is how permanent and profound and deep and connected that relationship is. They have to, they do hold on to your hand until you complete this journey. Now, there could be a possibility that they you may take a birth, human birth again, during the Guru's Avatar Kal. But if it doesn't happen, that message will come to you so seamlessly that you will immediately get tugged towards it and that association or that relationship will continue. Okay, this is how deep that relationship is. And that is essentially what this bhajan is telling us. Hari and Guru alone are yours. Oh my mind, surrender only to them. We'll continue on reciting this beautiful bhajan uh, as we go along. So, um, and then we'll keep on picking up Maharaji's bhajan and then, you know, different participants who can come in and sing a few lines. He has actually created a wealth, a treasure chest of bhajans um, for us. And I think it's an opportunity for us to take benefit from it during our sessions and talk about it a little bit as well. So one thing which I just got reminded of from this Maharaji's treasure chest is Bhakti Shatak is another one. And in uh, it is announced that in the upcoming family camp, uh, that is what is going to be discussed. And today, I think uh, the this count has been extended till today. That's what Shreyaji had announced. The people who have still missed out on registering for the family camp, the 50% discount uh, is there today as well. So do check that out and register yourself. Yeah, please do avail that opportunity. Bhakti Shatak, it's going to be an awesome, awesome retreat that we are on the family camp that's coming up. So do register for that. And uh, yeah, avail this opportunity if that offer has been extended. You can check it out. Yes, Yipti Chadi, you wanted to say real quick. And then we can wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. can we uh, register online for the family camp? I mean, last year it was. I don't know if the online registration is open yet. Not yet open. Online registration will open for some time. So. Yeah, but okay. we, you will be able to. Yeah, you will be. We will inform. I can participate, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I can yes, participate. Yes. Okay. Just like Bara Shivir, this will also be online uh, available. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So with that said, thank you again for another um, you know engaging session and. Uh, for uh, you know, asking questions which really enrich it for everyone, and we'll continue on this journey tomorrow. We'll conclude this shloka with uh, a very fascinating discussion we'll have around Pap and Punya. So thank you again. Uh, stay blessed and good night, good day from my side. Radhe Radhe. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Radhe Radhe. Thank you.